guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, in today's video, I am talking about Titanic. Released in 1997, Titanic was the highest grossing film of that year, earning over $1 billion. It achieved both critical and commercial success, including several Academy Awards and several Golden Globe Awards. Let's talk about it. The movie opens with a team of treasure hunters exploring the wreckage of the Titanic in search of a massive blue diamond called the Heart of the Ocean. After finding a picture of a woman wearing the diamond, Rose, a Titanic survivor, identifies herself as the woman in the picture and joins them. The real excitement begins when we are transported back in time through Rose's memory to the moment where everyone is preparing to board the Titanic. Rose boards the ship in style, accompanied by her mother, Ruth, and her fiancé, Cal. Although she is a wealthy first-class passenger, Rose is dreading the trip to America. To me, it was a slave ship, taking me back to America in chains. Then we are introduced to Jack, a penniless yet very talented young artist. When you got nothing, you got nothing to lose who happens to win tickets for himself and his friend in a game of poker. I'm going on! <laughs> he fancied himself the luckiest guy on earth, completely unaware of the tragic chain of events that were soon to befall him. Oh, the irony. Shortly after boarding the ship, Rose is so depressed about her arranged marriage to Cal that she attempts to jump off of the ship and drown. Honestly, I don't blame her. After all, who wants to marry for money or social status, rather than for love? Besides, they don't seem to have much in common. The difference between Cal's taste in art and mine is that I have some. They're fascinating. Anyway, Jack is just chilling up on deck, gazing at the stars, minding his own business, when suddenly this girl goes running past him. Immediately, he can tell that something isn't right. Just as Rose is about to plunge into the ice-cold ocean, Jack intervenes and convinces her to climb back over the railing, which turned out to be a much more difficult task than he had anticipated. <laughs> Especially when everyone else had a somewhat different idea of what had transpired. There's dirty work afoot. What do you think you were doing? Uh, saving her life, you dimwit. So after Rose explains how Jack rescued her from going overboard, Cal invites Jack to dine with them the following evening. With some urging, of course. I think a 20 should do it. <laughs> Is that the going rate for saving the woman you love? Jack then accepts his invitation. Later that night... Cal makes an attempt to buy Rose's affection with a very costly gift, a massive blue diamond called the Heart of the Ocean. But no amount of money or expensive gifts could ever make Rose fall in love with this guy. The next day, Rose goes out to talk to Jack. For a while, things seem to be going along splendidly, until Jack asks a question that instantly causes Rose to clam up. It's a simple question. Do you love the guy or not? Offended, Rose tells him that he's being rude and decides to leave. And then changes her mind and tells him to leave because they're on her part of the ship. Then out of nowhere, she snatches his art journal right out of his hands without asking and randomly starts flipping through it. Who's the rude one now? In their next scene together, Jack teaches Rose how to spit like a man. And they were really getting into it. Now all they need is a spittoon, like they had in the Old West. Just be sure not to dump it on someone. It is at this moment that Rose's mother happens to be walking by. What a great first impression, Jack. Suddenly the dinner, uh, horn, sounds and a wealthy first-class lady escorts Jack to her cabin and gives him a suit to wear for the occasion. At the dinner, Jack manages to make a good impression on the other first-class passengers, 
as he tells them about his philosophy on life. I figure life's a gift, and I don't intend on wasting it. You never know what hand you're going to get dealt next. When the dinner is over, Jack slips Rose a piece of paper telling her to meet him at the clock. She obliges, and Jack takes her down to the third class, where everyone is dancing and drinking and making merry. Jack and Rose quickly join in the fun and have the time of their lives. They were enjoying themselves so much, they didn't even realize they were being watched by Cal's right-hand man, Mr. Lovejoy. Yikes. That's not creepy at all. The next day, Cal and Rose's mother confront her about her whereabouts the previous night. Cal is none too thrilled about what transpired, and he flips out. My fiance. My fiance. My fiance. Yes, you are, and my fiance. Rose's mother tells her to stop seeing Jack and reminds Rose of how her father left them in bad debt jeopardizing their high social status. Later on, Jack sneaks onto the first class deck and pulls Rose into an empty room. He tells her that he can't let her go without knowing she's all right. Rose insists that she'll be fine, but Jack doesn't believe her. He says that Cal and Rose's mother have her trapped, and if she doesn't break free, the fire inside her will eventually burn out. Rose tells Jack to leave her alone and goes back to her mother, but she soon realizes that Jack is right. She goes to meet Jack at the bow of the Titanic, and the two share an intimate moment together as they look out over the railing at the magnificent view. So iconic. Then Rose and Jack make their way to Rose's cabin. Jack wants to know if Cal is around which is perfectly understandable. The last thing he wants is for Cal to come skulking around the area, especially when he hears a certain request from Rose. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls, wearing only this. So, after what Rose refers to as the most erotic moment of my life, she and Jack are interrupted by Mr. Lovejoy, who's been sent by Cal to search for Rose. They quickly slip out the door and make a mad dash through the ship with Lovejoy at their heels, finally losing him in the boiler room. After escaping Lovejoy, Rose and Jack find themselves in the cargo hold and climb aboard a 1912 Renault automobile. And from there, things get pretty heated. Back on the top deck, Rose tells Jack that she is going with him when the Titanic docks. At that moment, a lookout in the crow's nest sees a huge iceberg straight ahead and alerts the rest of the crew. But the huge ship is so slow to turn that it ends up hitting the iceberg, tearing open the right side of the ship's hull. As Jack and Rose go to warn the others about what happened, Cal instructs Lovejoy to slip the heart of the ocean into Jack's pocket to make him look like a thief so they can arrest him. Looks like someone's a little jealous. Jack is taken down to the E deck and handcuffed to a pole. Poor guy. Meanwhile, as the first class prepares to board the lifeboats, Rose is appalled by her mother's attitude and turns to go look for Jack. Cal tries to stop her, but Rose breaks free spitting in his face. Serves him right, the ill-tempered egomaniac. Rose follows Jack's voice to the room he's being held in. She looks around desperately for the spare key to free Jack, but it is nowhere to be found. Rose goes to get help, but it is to no avail. Spotting an emergency axe, Rose grabs it and uses it to cut through Jack's handcuffs. A risky move, as Rose could have easily cut one of his hands instead. As they make their way up to the top deck, people on the lower decks are panicking because the crew has them locked up behind gates on the flooding ship and refuse to let anyone through. But Jack has had enough. With the help of two of his friends, 
Jack rips a wooden bench out of the floor and wields it like a battering ram. Proving themselves quite a force to be reckoned with, they bust through the gate after only a couple swings. You can't go up there! You can't go there! <laughs> Once they reach the top deck, Jack and Rose rush over to the lifeboats. After a lot of urging from Jack and Cal, who wraps his coat around her, Rose reluctantly gets on a lifeboat. As the boat begins to lower down towards the water, Rose is overcome with emotion. She leaps out of the lifeboat and is pulled back onto the Titanic. Rose runs back to Jack, finding herself unable to leave without him. In a fit of rage, Cal swipes Lovejoy's gun and tries to kill them. Turns out, he had put the heart of the ocean into the pocket of the coat he had given to Rose. I put the coat on her! As the ship continues to sink, Rose and Jack find themselves stuck behind another locked gate. A crew member attempts to unlock the gate, but drops the keys and flees. Right before the corridor completely fills with water, Jack manages to grab the keys and unlock it. Meanwhile, Cal saves his own skin by using a helpless child he spots to get onto a lifeboat. Chaos abounds throughout the ship as the captain calmly shuts himself into his cabin, accepting his fate. Rose and Jack make their way to the back of the ship as it begins to tilt up into the air. Jack's friend, Fabrizio, meets an unfortunate end when a huge smokestack comes crashing down on him. Ouch! Jack and Rose hang on for dear life as the Titanic breaks in two and the back half rises straight up into the air. It doesn't take long for the rest of the ship to be completely submerged underwater. Jack and Rose fight their way up to the surface and swim over to a piece of door floating in the water. Now there's been a lot of debate on whether that door was able to hold the both of them. And seeing how the thing was tipping over when they were both trying to climb on leads me to believe that it was not stable enough. Before he freezes to death, Jack makes Rose promise that she will continue to live and never let go, no matter what. Here come the waterworks. She promises, and when one of the lifeboats comes back through looking for survivors, Rose gets their attention by blowing on a dead crew member's whistle. Come about! <gasps> back in the present day, Rose drops the heart of the ocean into the water and dies peacefully in her sleep shortly afterward. Then, in the final scene, she is reunited with Jack at last on the grand staircase of the Titanic. That was so beautiful. I gotta go.